Okay, now we're coming to the interesting part. We will look at the graphs and the charts. Help! Um, don't worry, we will do it one by one. Let's look first at figure one. Take five minutes to look at the two graphs and their explanations and understand them. Ask yourself, which groups are compared? What is the basis of comparison? That means, what is the topic that they're compared about? And what conclusions can we draw? So let's take those five minutes, press the pause, and come back when you're done. Okay, let's answer those questions. Let's look at the graphs and answer who is compared. We see that in all of the graphs, what we have is we have grade one and grade five, but we're not comparing a, a grade one to grade five. We're comparing Asian students and American students in grade one and in grade five. The study focuses on four cities, Chicago, Taipei, Sendai, and Beijing. Now, when we say, when we answer the question, who is compared, we have to refer to the people. We can't say we're comparing cities. We need to compare here the people. So we're comparing Asian and American students. Now let's answer the question about the basis of comparison. What is being compared? Well, this is easier. It's reading in the first and fifth grade and mathematics in the first and fifth grades. Now we get to the tricky part. What is the conclusion that we can draw? Of course, when we talk about achievements, we ask also, who is better? Remember that we have some idea from the clips that we watch, the YouTube clips, and from the title. So let that help you in the conclusion. In reading, it isn't so clear. Let's try to understand what those red dots represent first. The explanations under the picture tells us what each red dot is. Let's zoom in on the second sentence under the picture. The data plotted are mean scores from various schools, red dots. Hmm. So now we know that each red dot is a school. So we see that some of the schools in Chicago are better than some of the schools in the Asian cities, but some schools are worse. What happens in the fifth grade? The differences aren't as big anymore. The gaps are smaller. Some Chicago schools are doing much worse than the Asian schools. If we are still unclear about this, let's look at the explanations again. The third sentence begins, Although Americans performed best in reading in the first grade, they lost the advantage by the fifth grade. Hmm, so now things are becoming clear. Let's look at the mathematics graph. This is easy. Asian schools start off better and they just get better. The differences become bigger. Let's look at the last sentence in the captions. That's again the explanations. In mathematics, American students in both the first and the fifth grades on average scored the poorest. And look, the first sentence of the caption is a clear statement of what we just said. Let's zoom in on it. Test results show that American students fail to perform at a level comparable to that of their peers in Asia. So, what are our conclusions? In general, we can say that the Asian schools are doing better than the American schools, which is exactly what the title says. American schools can learn from Asian schools, or American schools could benefit from the teaching styles used in Asia. Now let's look at figure two. We have three graphs. Our question, which groups are compared and on which topics? Take yourself a few minutes, press the pause button and come back when you're ready.
Okay, we see that the first two graphs compare the mothers in America, in Minneapolis, and Asia, Taipei and Sendai, and the third graph compares the children in both places. Those are, those are our groups. What are the topics of comparison? Both graphs, A and B, deal with satisfaction. If we look at the explanations above, it says satisfaction with academic performance of students, that's A, and their children's schools, that's B, is higher among American mothers than is among Asian mothers. If you were in doubt or didn't understand the bar graphs, then you have it all written down very, very clearly. Now, who is more satisfied? Of course, that's what we read now, and that's what we see in the uh, bars. Surprise, the Americans are more satisfied. Let's look at the third graph. The third graph compares the children in both places, Chicago and Beijing, on how they see themselves as among the best. And again, we're asking, who is happy with himself or herself? The American child, of course. Now, this is a bit strange. There seems to be a paradox here. Question. According to figures one and two in their captions, what is paradoxical about the achievements of Asians and American students and their self-evaluation? We seem to see something that isn't rational. Take a minute to answer. It's important to practice writing. Write the paradox this way. On the one hand, on the ha other hand. Now let's answer. On the one hand, Asian students do much better than American students. On the other hand, Americans are more satisfied with their performance than Asians. You can word the answer differently as long as you see the contrast here between satisfaction and achievements. Now the interesting question is why this happens. I will let you think of possible explanations. And maybe we will have some answers in the text. One more graph to do. Let's look at figure three. We're asking ourselves again, who is compared? What is the basis of comparison, the topic of comparison? And what is the difference between Asians and Americans? Take a few minutes to look, read, and answer. Now, let's answer. First of all, who are we comparing? Well, obviously, we're still with Americans and Asians. Let's look at the cities. We're talking about Beijing and Chicago in the graph. And under the graph in the explanations, we see that we're talking about Chicago children and Beijing children. Now, the question is, um, what is the basis of comparison? And the explanation under the graph tells us exactly what it is. Um, we see that we're talking about cultural priorities. We see that we're talking about what they wish for or what they want. We see wishful thinking. So, what is the difference between Asians and Americans according to figure three? Well, what we see is Americans are more materialistic or Asians prefer education. See how high the graph of education for Beijing children. This is very interesting because we can start understanding a few things. If children are satisfied with their work and if their education is not top priority, then why work hard? I wonder if we can compare Israeli children and parents with what, they, what we want, willingness to work hard, if we want education or are we more materialistic? Where would we be on these graphs? Hmm.